Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jordan Elkind. I lead the product management team at Castora. You may know me better as French Revolutionary Number Two. Um, <laughs> thank you guys all so much for being here. Karma is uh, indisputably my favorite day of the year. It's really exciting to see so many friendly and new faces. Um, carrying on in the the French theme, I thought before we dive into Spotlight, we would actually start with a little amuse bouche to wet the palate after uh, after lunch. So I'm going to introduce you to the new new. Um, this is something that our data science and product team have been working on uh, for, for the past year, essentially. And we're really, really excited to introduce. Those of you who are Kastora customers may recognize what you're seeing on the screen here. Um, for those who are not, as you know, Kastora aggregates customer data from across many different touch points, organizes that data into a complete picture of each customer, and then runs predictive analytics to understand everything from customer lifetime value to churn propensity to product affinity, everything in the service of growing customer loyalty and lifetime value. Now, one of the most effective and, and popular ways that the customers that we work with personalize the customer experience and achieve breakthrough results is by matching customers with the products that are most likely to resonate with them. Not just the things that they have purchased in the past or browsed in the past, but really looking within the database for who the lookalikes are, similar to the way that Amazon or Netflix make recommendations based on what similar customers have browsed. And so what you're seeing here is a snapshot from Kastora's software that enables marketers to essentially build a, quote, lookalike audience for any product based on uh, how broadly or specifically we want to target uh, a message about that product. And this is great. We've seen wonderful adoption amongst our customer base. But then, starting about a year ago, we started getting some really interesting questions from the analytically savvy group of retailers that we serve. Like, hey, you're helping me do lookalike modeling uh, around product affinities. What about affinity for other things? For example, how likely is somebody to download our mobile app? For those retailers that have a, a branded or private label credit card, how likely are retailers to open a credit card account with us? That typically tends to be a stepping stone on, on the journey to customer loyalty. How likely are customers to sign up for a subscription? Now, many of the, the retailers that we work with are actively in the process of rolling out hybrid subscription programs as a way of locking in customer loyalty. I was struck during the earlier presentation by uh, Extol and Fresh Relevance, uh, who is likely to become an advocate or refer a friend seems like a question in the same vein. It's a, it's a loyalty driving behavior that many retailers would love to, to figure out who's likely to do this thing. And so we uh, put on our, our thinking caps on the data science and product side, and, and I've actually spent the last really six months building uh, an algorithm, a, a set of machine learning models that enables us to zoom in on specific high value behaviors like the ones I just mentioned, and actually find within the customer base lookalikes for any one of them. Um, all we have to do is get that data into Castora. Um, we will automatically run our machine learning models and forecast an individual's likelihood of taking part in any action on the road to loyalty. We call this predict anything. Um, <laughs> In, in all reality, it, it, this is not how we're choosing to uh, bring this offering to market. <laughs> we uh, refer to this as generalized event modeling, which, which doesn't quite roll off the tongue uh, as much as John Cusack holding a boombox outside your window, but um, we are incredibly excited about uh, having rolled this out. We have uh, run betas with a number of customers within Kastora's customer base, uh, including the Books who spoke earlier. Um, and for anybody who is a current part of the Castora family, I would invite and encourage you strongly to talk to your customer success uh, consultant to get this up and live today. Um, we're seeing really exciting breakthrough results and we want to share them with you. Everybody's palate feeling cleansed. <laughs> that was the nice sorbet. Now we're going to uh, segue into the entree. Um, it's my incredible pleasure to introduce a, a major new product release that, that we call Spotlight. Um, before diving into this, I, I just want to reflect a little bit. I, I recently passed my five and a half year mark as a Castorian. Um, and when I heard Corey say earlier this morning that the revolution is coming, I know exactly what he means. And not just because I'm certain that he's going to wear that outfit to work for the next two weeks. Um, when, when I first began at Castora, there were, amongst the, the retail uh, companies that we were working with, uh, murmured uprisings against the channeled, siloed product and, uh, and channeled data that had, had reigned for many years. Um, 
but it was nothing close to the full-throated revolution that we hear when we stand in front of audiences like you guys and go out and talk to retailers. Um, don't take my word for it that the age of the customer and, and uh, customer lifetime values ascendancy as the, the organizing principle of, uh, of the retail organization has come. We've actually got some nice hard numbers to prove this. So our friends over at the Harvard Business Review have uh, helpfully informed us that the vast majority of organizations are in fact undertaking customer-centric strategies. Beyond that, perhaps even more convincingly, when we look at financial disclosures, we see a fascinating and very clear pattern. And our friends on Wall Street aren't known for uh, taking too kindly to fuzzy vanity metrics, so you know that this has to be a real thing. For example, um, when we look at the, the 10K, the annual filing for folks like L Brands, we hear about their obsessive focus on retaining high value dual channel customers, an extremely important strategic segment for a retailer like L Brands that has a burgeoning e-commerce business and a very widely extended retail portfolio. We hear from folks like 1-800-Flowers. Uh, this is a company that has actually cited increasing lifetime value metrics within their report um, to the SEC. Burlington, um, especially fascinating how specific they are about the, the strategic customer segment that they're going after. They are laser focused on uh, serving their core customer who is a brand conscious fashion enthusiast, age 25 to 49. What emerges across the board, and these are not just cherry picked data points, is a, a sustained recognition in the industry that focusing on the customer and customer lifetime value is the only way to drive sustainable short term and long term growth. And yet, companies are not doing as well as they would like at this. 61% of executives feel that firms often struggle to bridge the gap between the high-level strategies, who our uh, target customer is, the high-value dual brand customer, for example, um, and day-to-day -day implementation. I would also invite you to uh, take a look at, at any metrics setting the extremely short tenure of CMOs these days. It is an extremely difficult environment in which to operate, and a, a good part of that stems from this persistent disconnect that we see between strategy that's set at the highest level um, and actual day-to-day -day tactics. And this has been an incredibly annoying problem for us as a bunch of engineers trying to crack this open over the last few years. Like, why is this so darn difficult to go from strategy to action? Um, and, and in a way, this has been the fundamental challenge that Castor has focused on uh, over our, our, our life as a company, right? Turning customer lifetime value from a theoretical concept into something that is so easy and straightforward to take action on that any company can do it. This is what we see a bridge between insight and action. And so when we started really trying to dig in and understand uh, what's going on, what we saw is that oftentimes at the highest level, there is conceptual clarity on what's going on, but that tends to get muddled as we work our way down to concrete actions. It gets lost in a, a panoply of vanity metrics, channel-specific reporting. It's really hard uh, when you're using channel tools to actually know the type of progress that you're making against customer goals. Uh, and so what you end up with is an organization um, that has not only not made progress against the customer goals, but it was beginning to doubt the strategy in the first place. Uh, and this was utterly and totally unacceptable to us. And, uh, and so over the past year, we've been dedicating uh, the vast majority of our product thinking outside of GEM to how we solve this incredible retail riddle, like the existential riddle of retail. Um, and what we saw when we looked in at the, the companies in Castor's portfolio is that while this is a tremendous struggle for the vast majority of them, there are some real winners. There are companies that are doing this persistently at scale, day in and day out. And Corey mentioned some of the, the wonderful companies uh, within the Casora portfolio who are doing this. We'll hear from one of them uh, in just a little bit. Um, but what we realized is while all the results might look like magic, the, the process itself is not magical. There's, there's nothing hand wavy about it. In fact, it comes down at the most basic level to having uh, a clear and consistent data-driven methodology, a virtuous cycle that takes companies from ideation and strategy through execution and, and right back. And so when we went out and talked to CMOs and retail executives and, and tried to distill their wisdom into kind of the, uh, the, the tent poles of this process, we really learned that they're doing four things that nobody else is doing. At the highest level, these folks understand that 
what you measure is what gets done. What you measure is the truth. And so these folks have uh, directed an obsessive fixation to defining the right customer metrics, things like customer lifetime value, the early repeat rate, what percentage of new customers are we getting to make a second purchase, how effectively are we stepping in and intervening when customers begin to show signs of, of turning away. And uh, they, they make a point of not just consulting these metrics uh, in the privacy of their own homes, but really escalating them to a centerpiece of uh, the weekly Monday meeting and all the way to the boardroom. So focus on, on the right customer metrics. Secondly, I, I would defy you, turn to your right, turn to your left, ask anybody, I would defy you to find a retailer uh, who is not time strapped and, and resource poor. We're all working to do more than, than we possibly can with the time and resources allotted to us. And so one trait that the, uh, the winners, the most effective retailers have in common is an absolute ruthless focus on prioritization. We call this 80-20 thinking at Castora. Um, essentially, the 20% uh, of things to do that will drive 80% of the benefit. And so for us, what that means in the context of um, this, this virtuous cycle of strategy to action is you know, once we identify which segments um, we want to track and measure what are the specific facets of customer behavior, the, the moments in the life cycle, the inflection points uh, where we have the greatest leverage, where we can apply the, the least effort and get the most bang for the buck in terms of growing lifetime value. Third, these companies uh, have developed a true discipline and proficiency around generating insights continuously. This isn't a, a nice to have exercise that they go through once every six months. Um, this is something that they do day in and day out and they transform individual level insights into unlocks at the segment level. How do we talk to our high value customers, um, our customers who are churning, and they're constantly looking for uh, what are the ways that we can use our data to improve upon the metrics that we know are most likely to impact the bottom line. And lastly, um, it, it is very sad um, when we see retailers who have gotten all of these pieces in place, uh, wonderful strategy, specific tactics that they want to undertake, uh, and then those tactics end up getting scrapped at the last minute because of operational friction. So seamless integration um, into channels and a closed loop measurement is, uh, is really the last piece of the puzzle. So this, like I said, is not magic, and we've actually um, been focusing hard on building a software product that embodies this virtuous cycle. This is what we call Spotlight. Uh, at its most basic, Spotlight is uh, an entirely new module of the Castora software that enables retailers to identify their most important strategic segments, to do scenario planning, opportunity sizing, and set goals against those segments, which can then be shared and socialized throughout the organization, and a machine learning engine that will continuously surface insights on where they are falling short relative to achieving that goal, and what actions to take next in order to move the needle. Let me walk you through what this looks like, at least in uh, schematic teaser terms. So the first step here, measurement. Um, it, uh, it is, uh, again, very sad to us when we work with retailers who have customer-centric ambitions. They want to focus on their uh, high-value dual-channel customers or their brand-conscious customer age 25 to 49, and actually pulling data on that segment uh, benchmarking their performance over time takes them a, a month of SQL queries to run. Uh, imagine instead that a user of Castora, all he or she would have to do is navigate to a uh, central application and click on a particular high value segment, strategic segment defined in whatever way resonates with their business. For this fictional retailer that we'll be working on for the next few minutes, imagine that they had aspirations of growing their engagement amongst millennial customers, a, a potential high value segment in the future that has strategic importance for them today. Literally, all they would have to do is click on that segment. We'll see if I can click on that segment. Um, and uh, what would open up to a user of the, the platform is a breakdown of the drivers of customer economics for that, that group of customers. Um, what you're looking at here, this is actually um, insights that we have ripped off shamelessly from the, the sharpest, most analytical retailers that we work with. Um, but when they look at a, a metric like lifetime value, how do we grow the LTV of our millennial customers? That's like a, uh, a high level, somewhat fuzzy question. By actually breaking down the drivers of LTV into actionable tactics, things like uh, how effectively are we, are we getting our millennial customers to come back and repeat? And hey, when we got one of them to come back and repeat, uh, how much are they worth over the course of the year? And further parsing that into uh, their average order value, how many items they're placing per order, the average unit prices 
of each of those items. What unfolds is almost a tactical roadmap uh, of choices that we could make of where to invest to grow the value of this segment. And the software does all of this. It actually makes recommendations on where to focus. And so for this retailer, again, um, obsessed with growing the value of its millennial customers, uh, the software would actually not just uh, unfold the, the benchmark and uh, trend for this segment over time, but actually recommend this retailer to focus on growing the number of items per order through targeted cross-sell tactics. Um, that is uh, based on our experience working with similar retailers, uh, with similar customer bases and uh, dynamics, the most direct path to actually drive impact on the customer base. Next we get to prioritization, and it is often the case, uh, even for retailers that are able to define their, their segment goals in a, a data-driven way, that the process of prioritization, which metrics to focus on and, and how much exactly to uh, focus on, on moving the needle, that's often left to intuition and gut. Um, again, one of the, the most powerful assets that we as Kasora feel like we can bring to the table is our intimate knowledge of, of the retail world and specifically the great portfolio of retail brands that we work with. And so we have actually benchmarked the potential impact of different generic uh, retention strategies from increasing your one to two time buyer rate, growing basket size, increasing the number of items per order for each and every retailer. So not only will the software uh, help unfold the, the drivers of value for a key segment and tell you where to focus, we'll actually give you data-driven guidance on how much we believe you can drive improvements as a business and what that means for the top and bottom line of, of, uh, of your company. So for example, um, our millennial obsessed business here Costora will actually recommend a range that is feasible for similar retailers um, undertaking similar efforts and guide the retailer in the process of, of setting and cementing a goal. In this case, the retailer has aligned on a, a millennial growth goal of 4% to be achieved by growing the number of items per order through targeted cross-sell strategies. Uh, and that's actually going to become baked as a goal for the retailer so that um, the next step for them is actually to understand what makes this segment tick. What are the unique facets uh, of this segment's behavior, preferences, attitudes that we can use to actually impact that metric? Kasora will produce out of the box recommendations. Uh, what are the unlocks for this segment, the things that make them unique and different from everybody else? Of course, all of these great segment level insights are actually powered by individual user level profiles that Castor is consistently enriching with machine learning on every user's preference. Everything from an individual's lifetime value, churn propensity, product affinities, discount sensitivities, uh, what they're likely to do in the future, as you can see here. And so why does this matter? Once a retailer has baked his or her goal, uh, Kasora will begin streaming reporting on that goal to key members of the retailer's organization. How are you as a retailer progressing against your goal of growing millennial AUR, excuse me, items per order? Um, and beyond that, where are you falling short? What are the tactics that your team must absolutely undertake this week in order to achieve that goal? So for this retailer, as you saw in the previous slide, they're under-indexing, falling a little short of their millennial goal relative to where our models predict they should be. We've actually scraped across all of the zillions of ways of sub-segmenting and clustering their millennial customers and identified what actions are most likely to help them close the gap. In this case, in particular, we see that engagement amongst in-store shoppers has dropped. That would be a great opportunity for them to loop in their store team. Uh, and we see that engagement amongst customers who have a predicted affinity for socks is not quite where it should be. Now, armed with all of these pieces of the puzzle, um, and of the specific levers of customer lifetime value that we want to impact on a key strategic segment, tactical guidance on what actions to take, which segments to drive personalization of, this retailer is now equipped to actually take those actions over the course of the week to grow the gap. As you know, um, one of the, the most exciting areas that Castor has been investing in really over the past year is um, integrating with a broad range of marketing channel partners throughout the marketing ecosystem. And I mentioned that it, it is all too often, unfortunately, the death of great insights when there's friction in getting them into your channel tools. Now imagine that it were as easy for this retailer to close that gap by cross-selling their SOC affinity millennial segment, by pushing a predicted affinity segment of SOC customers directly into Instagram or Facebook for targeting. Imagine that using LiveRamp, the CRM onboarding platform that enables this retailer to serve targeted display advertisements on the open web, 
This retailer could drive further cross-sell strategies for their SOC customers every time a relevant millennial customer is on the New York Times or Slate or ESPN. Imagine that this retailer could actually feed Costora's predicted individual user level affinities into a chatbot that they have on the site. Something that can recognize an individual user's identity, see that uh, we're talking to a millennial who has a strong affinity for pants, and actually make that upsell or cross-sell recommendation, all in the service of closing the gap on the customer strategy and driving lifetime value. This would be a mighty fine day indeed. And so this is what we're working towards. Um, and I'd actually like to invite up to the stage, of course, the, the great Nirvana here is achieving our goal and, and uh, overachieving. Thank you.